is a teacher who embraces innovation, never shies away from the next opportunity that engages students in learning, whether it's constructing the world's largest Sapinski triangle or using a, video, a photo from his cell phone of something in our community that makes math relevant. It is not hard to see what makes Mr. Kelton a great teacher and a great asset to New York High School. Without further introduction, I am pleased to welcome to the microphone Mr. Scott Kilton. Spoke to you, 
said he was ready to sign any forms that you needed to get extra credit for your government or civics classes. Here's the cool part. To the amazement of the city planning commission members, none of you stepped forward to get your extra credit. You weren't there that day to get something for yourself. I didn't say it at the time, but I'll tell you now. I'm proud of you guys. You came just to support the cause, you good for nothing. I was approached by students from Mr. Robinson's video editing class to help with a public service on it, announcement about how texting in class is unacceptable. This is the most creative way to get a teacher to get tackled by a student that I'd ever seen. I fell for it three times. So by association, you made me good for nothing, except for a little soreness that I got from leaning on that light switch. When KDOT wanted to unveil their aerospace analysis tool, a brainchild of Mr. Ed Young from Eudora, took place on a Friday when students weren't supposed to be at school anyway, a teacher in service day. When I asked for volunteers to come in and offer feedback to the KDOT folks about how their software looked and acted, I almost had to find more desks. The media staff commented numerous times about how great my students when they didn't have to be at school at all. Again, good for nothing kids. I casually showed a handful of students a picture of a Sapinski triangle made out of pennies. I mentioned how our school had done coin draws in the past. They ran with the idea and managed to get over $250 raised three days. Not stop from there. They burdened me with having to track down $600 in pennies so that we could beat the known record for such figures. With all the proceeds benefiting the March Dimes, these students incorporated teamwork, charity, and a killer math lesson in one fell swoop. No banners were hung up to recognize their efforts. The folks, uh, the folks at Guinness World Records just kind of shrugged their shoulders at us to find a record that compared to what we achieved. For an activity where a collection of students showed up to work at four in the morning, with no incentive either. Again, good for nothing kids. A couple weeks ago, I came back to school at 8.30 in the evening, only cross paths with Garrett Cleveland. He said he was working on a new sculpture in the art room. The league art contest was over earlier in that week, so there was no chance of him receiving any recognition for his project, nor would he be the cunning type to pull off an elaborate senior prank and use art as his alibi. Garrett, you exemplify a good for nothing Tara Miller has long been known among staff members as an incredible photographer, actress, and artist, having her work used literally across the nation from the photos that she's taken at school events and activities. For so long, she exemplified a good-for-nothing kid in that she was never paid for her work. And this past Tuesday, she showed me her first paycheck for taking photographs. I've known it for a while, but that check finally showed that Tara Miller can be good for something and actually get paid for doing something that she excelled at. For these reasons, and plenty of others that I've not mentioned, I'm not as excited about your graduation as I am for your 10-year reunion. I look forward to seeing what, they, what hat David Pierce will be wearing in 10 years. <clears throat> Kansas City Royals hat, Kansas Bureau of Investigation, one of those wide-brimmed Kansas State Trooper hats, or the Pierce fire truck hat that I got him as a graduation present. Sorry to ruin the surprise. I look forward to taking my family's animals to a veterinary clinic run by Matthew Kelso. I know that they will get the most knowledgeable, passionate care available, save for a vague recollection of how catheters differ when used with animals and when used with humans. I'll ask him sometime. I look forward to seeing amazing commercials, print advertisements, billboards, and even videos designed by talented students like Jen Bowser, Anna Berthelson, and Hannah Gregg. I look forward to hearing Alyssa Wellborn's laugh. I look forward to Austin Catsby still hailing herself as the best Catsby kid. And Jordan Ballack bragging to me how he was the third Ballack kid to graduate from his state. Do the math on that one, Judge. <laughs> I look forward to having Madeline Dickerson contact me to see if I'll put a yard sign out for whatever political candidate she's working for. And no matter what that candidate's beliefs, police, I'll do it because I know how much effort Madeline will have put into their campaign and I'm pretty sure she'd cry if I told her no. I look forward to buying drugs from Brock Miller. <laughs> it's just a little elaborating on that, he plans to be a pharmacist. I look forward to Chad Mullen, 10 years from now, due for another haircut. I look forward to Mike Dolan, Josh Benoit, Derek Higgins, Derek Webb, Ed Martinez, Cody Howard, and Jared Stickler 10 years from now. Because they'll probably all have a smile on their face no matter what. Their attitudes are infectious to others around them. I just like being around those guys. I look forward to seeing Ryan Leary in 10 years. 
chatting with him for a while, then asking me if I know who took his shoe. And seeing him still act surprised that somebody would do that to him. I look forward to buying a protein shake marketed by Matthew Gebert. I look forward to Lucas Becker. I don't have a snarky comment here. Mainly because he's always surprised me, so I don't want to influence which direction he might go in life. Although he's probably going to interrupt me right now and say, But Kel, you've already influenced me so much to this great point in my life. Why stop now? That, Lucas, I'd say, get back to work. And even though my wife and I are done having kids, I say, <laughs> I know that future parents will receive great care from nurses and doctors like Bev Virtue, Ashlyn Jackson, Catherine Barber, Taylor Chris, and Cassie Robbins. I look forward to reading a book written by Kate Dennis while riding in an airplane that she works to make safer. I look forward to receiving an invitation to Christian Turnbull's wedding. I think he smiles big now, so I'm anxious to see just how much bigger that smile can get on his wedding day. Plus, I think he'd look really good in a full beard and tuxedo. <laughs> Ten years from now, I expect to hear a good story from every one of you. A good story about something you've done for yourself. Perhaps you'll have written a book or built a house. Perhaps you'll have started a business or lived in a foreign country. These are all good things, and you possess the first material. Let me try again, because she's going to have trouble with it too. These are all good things, and you all possess the perspicacity and wherewithal to do great things. We need to do things that are good for us, but I hope to hear a bit more from you also. In 10 years, I hope to hear something else, something that will remind me of how you were when you were in high school. I'd like to hear about something that you did that was good for nothing. So, for the class of 2012, I encourage you to be good for nothing, because that's what can and will make you great. Ah! <sighs>